If you want to turn your tireable meshes into levels like this really fast, you came to the right place. I'm going to talk about everything you need to know about Godot's grid maps, which are basically 3D tile maps. So we have a pretty simple scene here to start. We just have a directional light, a world environment, and a water mesh. We have all of the meshes that we want to use in a folder, and the first thing that we need to do to use a grid map is to create a mesh library out of the meshes. Create a new scene and save it. Then drag all of the mesh files into it. They are all going to be stacked on top of each other in the scene, but it doesn't matter for the mesh library because it separates them into their own tiles. Click on the scene drop down and select export mesh library. Choose a file name and click save. This gives us a mesh library resource that we can then use in a grid map. So let's go back to the game scene and add a new grid map node. Then we can drag our mesh library into the corresponding resource and change the cell size to fit our tiles. Then we can select the tile that we want to use and we can decide where to place them on on the X and Z axis by moving our mouse around and on the Y axis by changing the floor property. We can draw tiles by left clicking and then erase them by right clicking. This is fine and all, but it's definitely not the way to fill large areas on the map. For that, we can shift drag in the editor to select an area on the current floor. Click Ctrl F to fill it with the selected tile. You can find all of the relevant actions and their shortcuts in this dropdown. Let's run through some of the important ones using this arrow here. We can rotate the selected tile on the Y axis by pressing S, on the X axis by pressing A, and on the Z axis by pressing D. One thing that's really inconvenient about using grid maps is that unfortunately you can't move around in the editor unless you deselect the grid map by pressing escape. The perspective view is also not always ideal for seeing where you're placing the tiles, so you might find it useful to change the perspective to top view in order to edit your maps faster. While making your level, you may want to edit the individual tiles. For for example, I need to add collision shapes to these as well as change up some of the materials. To make it easy to work with just one mesh at a time, I turn off the visibility on the whole list and find the one I want to edit. The meshes have no 3Ds as parents in this case, so to have access to the meshes themselves, make sure to right click on the nodes and select make local. To have access to the material, you want to right click on it and click edit. After we change the material, add a static body as the child of the mesh for collisions. For a fast collision shape, you can click on the mesh again and then the mesh drop down select create single convex collision sibling. Mesh libraries ignore all of the nodes except the mesh itself and the collision shapes so don't try to add any complex logic in here. When you're happy with the changes export the library again but choose a different folder because Godot doesn't like overriding mesh libraries for some reason. When that's done clear the original mesh library on the grid map which will make our entire level disappear. But don't worry once we add the new one everything's going to be fine. So that's Godot's grid maps. If the video was helpful, consider leaving a like, and if you'd like to learn more about making 3D games in Godot, check out my first person character controller video or my full level design video.